Hello, my name is uh, Lauri Alman and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Cybexer Technologies. My title is Chief Storytelling Officer and my job is to predict scenarios, what may happen. And let me tell you, these last two years, it has been one hell of a difficult job. If two years ago, I would have submitted a scenario to a client of the stuff that is happening now, they would have rejected it, saying it's overblown, unrealistic, full of cliches, and simply impossible. The hard truth is that it is happening now. There's um, a really hard, heavy stuff uh, going on in the cyber world. The threats have grown exponentially. Some of the threats have realized that uh, we uh, uh, didn't think would be possible. So I think the first message uh, from our company, it is, it is here, it is happening, it is happening now. Let me take you through a uh, 30, to, uh, 30 second to one minute simple scenario that we uh, have created and let's see what we can do about it. Um, a typical uh, scenario would start with a critical information infrastructure provider who now has a new e-service. They need to reach to more customers, so they hire a well-known programming company to provide that service. The well-known programming company goes to another country, maybe not so well-known country, and hires another company, maybe not so well-known company, and finally ends up buying it. What happens here is this company now, not beknownst to this critical information sector company, is in the supply chain. Somebody clicks on a bad link, something gets executed, and bad stuff happens. Bad stuff happens, and this is now on the table of CEO, who probably has no training on cybersecurity. Uh, there is implication on the stock price and whatnot. The attackers do something really banal, like a uh, um, defacement or distributed denial of service attack, putting a company under hard pressure. And what we have, we have exhausted workforce uh, that we have uh, not enough and we have a blackout. This is what we have to deal with. And the question why this is happening is all related to human beings. And the cliche answer to this tends to be because human are, humans are the weakest link. Our job in the company, as we have defined it, is to counter that uh, somewhat truism and to say that Actually, humans are the most important link, and we need to look at those instances and ask why these things are happening and what can we do to turn this weak link into the strong link and build a human firewall. Let's see, um, somebody clicks on a link. And this is a, this is a matter of cyber hygiene, cyber awareness, and our approach to cyber awareness is really to drill down on the question of why and ask why people are engaged the behavior that they are engaged. This is not a shooting cont competition. This is not a Ten Commandments moralizing les lesson, but it's an exercise in patience. Estonian government has implemented a government-wide cyber awareness program. We are uh, proud to be part of it, and, and this is uh, one of the challenges. A CEO uh, having to answer the question, the cliche question is, it is a technical problem and what we uh, need to deal here is that no, no, it is not. It is to make everybody understand that behind the table deciding those issues are in, are people who, are, who have no uh, cyber background and maybe they are in roles of taking some of the most important decisions. So. It is a non-technical issue and we need to find a way how to create clarity of mind among those leaders. Now something technical happens. And in technical level, we also counter cliches. And the typical cliche as a technical cybersecurity company providing mostly technical training, cyber ranges, one of the statements that we have countered very often is it's unique. 
we are too big, we are too special. We are too confidential. Our industry is uh, extremely different. So let's take this uh, notion and deal with it. And to deal with this um, uh, problem, we actually created an exercise which is called cooperative resilience. We tested out what, if, what happens if we set up a cyber range with a scenario with what I just described and invite various critical information providers exercise together. Can we get from this, it is unique, to cooperative resilience, and we did. Banking, energy, uh, water, uh, beer manufacturing, uh, we're all exercising on the same range, sharing intelligence, sharing their experiences, and building this resilience. And if you're interested in the breakout session, I'm going to talk about this exercise. We can walk through the uh, virtual machines that we use. We can actually go to the range, and I can show you what we did. But what we also thought was, would it be possible to actually build something permanent of that exercise? Can we build a global cyber range federation uh, that, uh, that would serve those customers on a more permanent basis. And again, what we countered in, in, in this uh, challenge was everybody saying it is unique. So um, one of the conclusions that we had in, in, in the cyber range business was that actually let's try to challenge this. And in order to build a firewall in this technical area, what we really need to do is to break the wall and increase the break of wall non-transparency and to increase transparency, not only among customers, but also among manufacturers. What we are going to produce uh, and publish in www.cybexer.com website is a open, cyber range configurator, and yes, together with prices, that uh, everybody can go, everybody can see how special they are and, and what uh, solutions for this we can uh, uh, offer and if that can be standardized. But that was not the only picture. Uh, that was not all the pictures that I showed. I had the fourth element in our uh, presentation and that was the element of blackout. This is probably one of the greatest problems that we are, we are facing now uh, in, the human, uh, in the human field. This is the cliche uh, answer to this is there are not enough qualified personnel uh, to deal with our cyber threats. We are really living in a time and age when this generation of young people could actually face a global blackout caused by a cyber attack. This is what who we call a blackout generation. And to face that challenge, what we have decided is to actually use that very generation to be part of the solution. We have created a project called Cyber Stars and our goal is to attract in the company around the world young people from 16 to 18, 19, 20 years old to the profession of cybersecurity. Our problem, we are also more than glad to uh, engage people who have experience in, uh, in cyber and who already have displayed interest. But most interested we are in young people who have not shown any particular interest. 50% of our cyber stars who take part in cyber battle series that we organize in a format that is similar to American Idol or UK Got Talent um, in a scenario based fun way are young people who have not shown any interest in cyber, who we attract through social media and uh, and advertising, and uh, it has proven uh, quite successful, and this is something with which we want to reach out also across uh, the world, and this is another topic that I would like to discuss uh, in our breakout sessions. And this is how we build the cyber, uh, this is how we build the human firewall in cybersecurity. We take patience to ask why people click those wrong links, 
we create clarity of mind in our strategic leaders, we try to deal with the uniqueness of those organizations, and we take the next generation to solve the problem that is ahead of them. This is all. Join me in the breakout session, and we are going to talk about the exercise, cooperative resilience, range configurator, and also cyber battle series. Well, uh, Lauri, thank you so much for uh, telling us more about what CyberXR Technology uh, does. Um, we've got two questions from the audience, but first we will take a look at the results of the previous poll. The question was, how often do you change your passwords? One person said every week. Um, I would love that person to reach out to us uh, at the Estonia Briefing Center and uh, so we can send you a tiny chocolate basket. Uh, to the other people, well, it's basically 50-50 between twice a year and only after my Gmail account gets hacked. Does that sound fair to you? That sounds suspicious every week. Uh, I would <laughs> like to uh, have a discussion in the breakout room <laughs> because in our platform, uh, uh, that would qualify as a risky answer because it's too correct. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes we uh, sometimes we also are look uh, we are looking out for people who actually answer too correctly. How many uh, passwords do you have? I have same password for every account, of course. How many USB drives do you use? I never use USB drives. Where do you keep your password? In a locker room. Where do you keep the key to the locker? I keep it chained on my, uh, on my neck. Where is it when you take a shower? I take it with, with me to the shower. So yes. this, is, <laughs> this is suspicious. So I, I, I don't <coughs> believe that. Uh, I'd like to have a discussion. <laughs> Um, so I've got two questions uh, for you. The first one is um, not so much tied to everything that you've said, uh, but uh, still interested in, in you and what you do. A really cool job title. How do I get a job like that? Um, it's just um, you don't have to be a cyber expert. Uh, I think uh, uh, and uh, most important and I think interesting part uh, for me is when I tell the stories, I try to listen uh, more importantly, I think, uh, and 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 try to build a bridge between technical and uh, and uh, non-technical personnel. My first job to tell a cyber story was in 2007 when I was permanent secretary of defense. Estonia was just attacked, and we had to decide if we're going to talk about this. And then we had to create various talking points. And the technical breach that I would like to describe was the moment I, I entered to the national cert. It's full of cyber experts, and I ask a question. Can you tell me how many computers were belonging to the botnet that attacked Estonia in 2007? And the room full of technicians burst out in laughter because technically it doesn't make any sense mm. because every computer is different. <coughs> what you're interested, they asked me, is the compute power? I said, no, 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 no. I'm interested in how many computers. But they said, this is not interesting for me. I said, no, I'm creating talking points for the government. Uh, to use, and what I want to know is how many people's computers were trespassed to mount this uh, account, uh, this uh, this attack. And so we created a talking point. Estonia in 2007 was attacked by more than one million computer in 140 countries, including Vatican. So this is what we do. Yeah. So so I think it's it's sort of humanizing cybersecurity. Humanizing. We need to tell levels. the story and we need to put this thing into <coughs> human language. But also we need to keep listening to technical side. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the um, more topical question was: uh, What is the most interesting hacking target that the company has ever had? Can you tell us more about that? River Danube. Mm -hmm. um, Exercise 2018, Austrian uh, government, we did it, and it was widely published as well. Uh, it was open to, uh, uh, to various countries and, uh, and wider public, so we can a little bit talk about it. And uh, what we were asked there to do was to create a scenario whereby a river Danube was hacked. And in the, in the immediately, I, I thought that, you know, it's a natural it's phenomenon, <laughs> it's water. <laughs> But turns out River Danube is an information system. Mm. It's, co it's controlled by levees and dams and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you can actually shut down a pretty big chunk of European economy if you hack River Danube. Don't do it. But uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I think it also sort of uh, um, changes the focus on what can be uh, sort of touched by security and cyber, cyber attacks. So it's not just a server in a room, but also uh, a more ecosystem approach that, uh, that can affect uh, whether, whether it's telecommunications lines or electricity or uh, infrastructure channels. So, so everything from A to Z, really. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Lauri, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Thank you.